All right, folks, welcome to the brand new show, Off the Edge. I'm Jake Ellenbogen. Joining me here is my partner over on Believe in Rams. Now we're both coming over on here. We'll still be doing Believe in Rams, but Cameron Lynch, everybody. How you doing, Cameron? All right. All is well. We're off the edge right now, Jake. So looking <laughs> forward to, you know, kicking this off. And this is our first episode. So hopefully first of many and uh, hype to share some NFL news. Absolutely. Happy to be doing this for Believe and uh, happy to be doing this for BetOnline.ag, our partners over there. So uh, BetOnline.ag is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. BetOnline is always your sports information headquarters this season as we have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL, hockey, right to UFC and boxing. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games you can play right from your home. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive 50% of welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. So, Cam, uh, for those of you out there that uh, listen to us over on Believe in Rams, you'll know how we start everything. It's uh, the burning question, right? Yeah. And uh, I texted you pretty early today uh, because I was like, man, we got some news. Like, we're off the rip, man. Uh How about Jalen Hurts? Guy gets a record-breaking five-year, $255 million deal this morning. Um, $179 million is guaranteed, Cam. And uh, there's a no-trade clause here. So the burning question is, did the Eagles make the right decision signing Jalen Hurts to that record-breaking deal? Jake, I want to say bring out the Brinks truck, my guy. His uh, his agent, Nicole Lynn, actually – put a tweet out earlier she was like does anyone know where i can find a brinks truck and she said wait a minute i think i found one i believe after she closed the deal so it's really cool to see that happen if anyone has watched football at all they've seen the super bowl i'm sure and if they didn't they saw the highlights and what they did see they did see jalen hurts pretty much outplay anyone and everyone on that football field unfortunately they didn't get the w but he was the best performer and just going to ppf right um Jalen Hurts was the highest ranked uh, PPF, I guess, uh, uh, participant since 2010. Aaron Rodgers, his was 91.7 and Jalen Hurts with a 92.9. So to answer your question, I do believe Jalen Hurts does does deserve the Brinks truck. And kind of going to, you know, PPF again, and just I looked up some of the information there. I saw last year uh, he was 21st in passing yards, 21st in attempts. 23rd in touchdowns and 25th for interceptions this year he was 10th in passing yards 16th in attempts and 14th in in touchdowns and of course had a great a great Super Bowl so I do believe the money is well worth it and Jake I think the foundation of how Jalen got here is extremely important going to his team his team he's a team of all women right it's starting with Nicole Lynn uh, being his agent um, at Clutch Sports, which is really cool to see her excel in the space. I know she's like the SVP of football, um, so she's running the sh- or vice president of football. So she's running the show, the show there. And then when it comes to management, marketing, communications, he has all women on his staff. So I think he's rewriting the script for sports in general. Um, and I love to see that he has he's gotten the big payday. So Jake, we'd love to hear your thoughts as well. But that's how I feel about our guy Jalen Hurts. Oh, I'm a big fan of Jalen Hurts. Um, You know, I've liked Alabama a little bit, you know, over the years. Just, uh, you know, I kind of like the hate that they get, uh, even though they're like (laughs) the Patriots of college football. They're not my favorite team, but they're a team that I, you know, kind of root for. Um, But I really like Jalen Hurts in Alabama when he was there. And uh, he handled that whole situation so perfectly. I mean, you just never know what's going to happen when you're the starter and then you get hurt and then someone takes over for you. Then you take over for them getting hurt and then you don't get a chance to play in the national title game and you're just gracious and, uh, you know, supportive teammate. And yeah, you go ahead and you transfer to Oklahoma, but you make your presence known at Oklahoma. You go in the second round after having a great senior bowl. I can attest to that. I was at the senior bowl. I actually had a chance to speak to him a little bit at a restaurant as well as uh, Nicole. I thought that was kind of cool, but um, what restaurant do what restaurant? Jake? I, I do not remember. <laughs> it was like, oh, man, there was like gumbo. I had uh, uh, that does narrow it down. We were in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, OK, hey, gumbo is a win win, though. It's a win win. Yeah. Gumbo. <laughs> uh, hey, absolutely. So, I mean, look, 
Jalen Hurts, second round pick, going to a place. I mean, our guy Carson Wentz was the starter there, right? And it's kind of along the lines like, hey, wait a minute. Like, you brought me in to be the guy. Jalen Hurts comes in. He, you know, he's getting that kind of Jordan Love treatment a little bit. Not saying that Aaron uh, Rodgers wasn't, you know, trying to develop Jordan Love or try to help him out in any way possible and not saying Wentz wasn't. Uh, but you are that guy that kind of gets put in when there's already a starter there, right? So, uh, you know, Jalen Hurts kind of had to earn his keep and, you know, he did. And I absolutely agree with you. Um, I honestly would have named him Super Bowl MVP regardless of the outcome of the game. He was clearly the best. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he did everything they, you know, he could possibly do to to bring a uh, Lombardi back to Philly and it just didn't happen. But uh, this is also a really good deal I want to bring up for Philly uh, because Philly's getting in right now. They're they're getting this deal done. This is going to be a discount, Cam. I know you've heard that before. We talk about Jared Goff and that's kind of where a deal can kind of backfire a little bit. But when you talk about this deal right now, you're getting him signed before you even get to see Joe Burrow, before you get to even see Lamar Jackson even, and before you get to see Justin Herbert, uh, which the Believe social media page uh, tweeted out, who's next? You know, whoever's, who, who, who's going to get the highest paid? And, you know, I look at it, it's whoever's the last one. And I think that's really the name of the game. So to get Jalen Hurts extended now will probably reap some benefits moving forward. Yep, I agree. And like you said, who's next? I mean, you got Joe Burrow, who's been to the Super Bowl in these past three years about twice. So I think, Jake, if we're, if we're really being honest, uh, big play Burrow might be the guy who, who gets the most money there. So if I'm going to answer the question for Believe, feel free to clip this out. Go ahead and put it on the social media page. I think Joe Burrow will get the most money here in this offseason. I know Lamar Jackson is working through it. I know he wants that fully guaranteed contract. Um, and to your point, seeing this, how this contract was structured for Jalen Hurts, I don't think all of it was fully guaranteed. I believe he had a portion of most of it guaranteed, a lot of it. So um, I think that'll set the precedent for Lamar Jackson um, and the rest of the group there. But I do think Joe Burrow will get most of that money. Uh, and then another reason why I say that, too, right, Lamar has Odell Beckham. So that's more incentive. I feel like the Ravens are like, aha, we, we got a guy that you could throw the ball to. So you're going to have to take what we give you. Um but I do hope Lamar gets a lot of his money. I know we talk about that a lot on our Believe in Rams podcast, but this here is off the edge and we're talking everything NFL. So not only the Rams football there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I look at it. I actually think Herbert is going to get the most because I think he's going to be the last one paid out of those three. Um, mm. And, you know, we know how that goes. It's it's the last guy. It's a it's a stock game, if you will. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, everyone has to get their their due, um, you know, but I think that'll he'll be the last one in that group. Uh, so that's how I would answer that question. Now, um, you know, kind of wrapping up this, you know, uh, this segment here. I just want to get your thoughts. You know, we talk about, you know, Hertz. We talk about Burrow. We talk about Herbert, um, you know, and Lamar Jackson. How many of those guys do you see getting those deals on other teams? Oh, that's a good question, Jake. That could be a burning question by itself <laughs> right there. <laughs> and so we talk about those deals on other teams. It's it's I mean, Lamar Jackson would probably be the only other guy who can get a, a deal like that on another team at this moment. Um, but I do, I do think that most of these teams will pay out the quarterbacks. I don't think they'll move away from their their quarter, current quarterbacks. Um, you know, it's, think about like a Joe Burrow, right, or even Justin Herbert. The vibe would not would the vibe would be to stay with these guys, right? If it's not broke, don't fix it. I think that's that's how you roll. And of course, I'm teeing up our next segment a little bit when it comes to the vibes. But I, I do like the vibes of each team keeping you know, their franchise quarterbacks and really extending them and, and give them what give them what they want. We talk about this a lot on the Believe in Rams podcast, Jake, but we talk about it. A happy wife equals a happy life. You know, for the Rams specifically, a happy Aaron Donald equals a happy life. So if you just take out Aaron Donald and add in these quarterbacks, a Joe Burrow, uh, Justin Herbert, a happy Joe Burrow, uh, happy Herbert equals a happy football team and a successful football team. That's what I think. What, what are your thoughts? I'm with you. I don't think either of those guys leave. And if they do, uh, those teams messed up. You just don't find <laughs> <laughs> Joe Burrows don't grow on trees. Justin Herbert's don't grow on trees. Uh, yeah. So it, it's it's really that simple. I mean, I, I can't make it any more simple than that. I, the only guy that I think potentially leaves, like you said, is Lamar. 
Um, but I think, you know, those other teams will get those guys taken care of. And then, you know, down the road, we could be talking about Jacksonville doing the same thing with Trevor Lawrence, who will probably be the highest paid out of everybody because he'll, you know, he'll be getting after. So I don't know. I guess the question at that point remains like how much further can this go? Like, you know, 51 million a year, does that ever become a <laughs> hundred million a year? I mean, like who knows? We, we really don't. So, uh, one thing we do know is that we vibe with some things. And we don't vibe with some things, yeah, right? Yeah. And yeah. this next this next segment is going to be a vibe or don't vibe with segment. Um, it's brand mm. new, obviously, just like the show. And I'm just going to be throwing, you know, takes your way that are kind of the consensus right now, maybe. And uh, just want to get your thoughts. I mean, also, I'll I give my it. thoughts as well. But uh, the first one, I figured we stick with quarterback. We're, we're talking about signal callers to start the show anyway. Um, so... Adam Schefter had an interesting thing today. He basically said that there's going to be one quarterback that goes number one overall. And then he doesn't expect a quarterback to go until pick number four. Um, do you vibe with a quarterback not going until the fourth pick after the number one pick? Or do you think there'll be some picks in there that go quarterback? Yeah, I don't vibe with that. I think there's too many teams who need a quarterback, you know, early on. So I don't vibe with that at all. I know when you just talk about like the teams that are going to pick, right? There's teams that, that hey, <laughs> if you go with an edge rusher or some of these other players, like, hey, man, we need to fill some of these vacancies. So I would say that, you know, um, I'm not vibing with with the quarterback going past the the fourth pick. Um and I would love to pull up some of the uh, uh, the the betting the the pick process right now. But what are your thoughts, Jake? What, what do you think? Are you are you vibing or not vibing? I'm not vibing with that at all. Um, I understand like Schefter works his tail off, but I, I I'm starting to understand why some people are like a little iffy with Schefter because he put it out there and he was like, "This is it, right? This 100. percent This there's not going to be a pick at quarterback until the fourth pick after the first one, right?" And and it always, like, it, it's interesting, Cam, because when you have those guys on, you know, right in front of the big cameras and they're, you know, they're on, you know, the, the big TV stations and whatnot, they kind of say things like, oh, people on the internet are going to be really surprised, right? Um, look, I wouldn't be surprised if these are GMs telling Schefter this to kind of create a smokescreen. I mean, I, I would be really surprised if we only have two quarterbacks picked in the top four. You got... Bryce Young, who right now is trending going number one overall, but we don't know what the Panthers are doing. They could go Anthony Richardson for all we know. And honestly, I think that's what they could do. Like I'm, I'm really starting to wonder if that's what they end up doing, but Bryce Young, Anthony Richardson, CJ Stroud, and you and I might not be as high on him, but Will Levis is a guy that I've been seeing, you know, ranked really high uh, among people. So look, the idea that only one quarterback goes it, or two quarterbacks go in the top four is a little surprising to me. And if that's the Colts, then they made out like bandits because if they don't have to trade up to get their franchise quarterback, Chris Ballard's going to have all of that draft capital to really start fleshing this team out. Because keep in mind, the Colts have not been a bad, you know, they haven't had a bad roster. They dealt with injuries this year. The Matt Ryan experiment didn't work. And the year before Carson Wentz, they missed the playoffs by one game. But I'm going to be honest with you. The Colts could be a quick team to, to rise up with Gardner Minshew. They get a quarterback and now they don't have to give up capital. They could go out and they could get some, maybe even trade up and, you know, get frisky with it. I don't know. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm looking at the, the draft selection now, the process. So we got the Panthers, uh, the Texans, the Colts, um, the Cardinals, they already have their quarterback. Seahawks already have their quarterback lines due to Raiders do. And you got the Falcons coming up. I know that's pick eight, but just talking about those top four, I mean, there's three teams that need a quarterback. So unless someone's looking really to uh, make a blockbuster trade, I don't see um, I don't see some of the quarterbacks falling out of those those first three picks unless we see big trades. And you, like you mentioned, Adam Schefter, he might be getting some information, Jake, that we don't have. Right? He's an NFL insider for a reason. Um, he's connected to those GMs for a reason. So. If he's hearing some things that people will trade up or, or make moves, then you know we'll see. Um, but like you said, right there, there could be it could be smoke screen. It could be different things. I, you know, it's a chess match right now. Um, we're about ten days away, you know, from this from this draft, a couple of days away from this draft. So 
right now anything is is fair game. Um, I know with Lamar Jackson, with Aaron Rodgers being on the market, I'm sure you're going to see a lot of uh, what they call window dressing from yeah. now in between the draft. There's going to be a lot of window dressing. So with those guys mm-hmm. on the market, um, with this draft coming up, I think we're going to see a lot of things come across our face that's not real. So I'm going to skip the question. We'll, we'll still address it, but I'm going to move on to a different question here um, because you just gave me an idea. So Dan Snyder is selling the team, finally. Mm-hmm. And the commanders are going to be owned by an ownership group uh, that even includes Magic Johnson in it, uh, owned by Josh Harris. Um, so the first thing for, you know, vibe or don't vibe with Do you vibe with the idea that Josh Harris, the new commander's owner, will lead Washington back to the Super Bowl in the next five years for the first time since three years before I was born in 1992? (laughs) I do think, I mean, I'm just looking at the stats for Dan Snyder, right? Just kind of his his track record. Um, Zero Super Bowl Bowl wins, um, only six playoff appearances. And mind you, this is since he bought the team. So he got the team, I believe, in 1992. So it the stats right now don't look good, right? Six playoff appearances. I know Taylor Heineke found his way to get to one uh, a few years ago, uh, four NFC titles, um, only three double-digit win seasons, and then 27 different starting quarterbacks under Dan Snyder. So It's almost <laughs> as many allegations as they have. I mean, you said it. You said, I mean, at this point, you said it, and just I think kind of seeing where the program has gone for the Washington, Washington Commanders. It's about that time for for a change of guard here. So um, I am vibing with Josh Harris, changing things around a little bit. Um, and you you mentioned something with with Magic Johnson being a part of that a part of that ownership group. One thing I know about that guy, he knows how to win. I believe he has stake in the the Dodgers, uh, the Spark, uh, the LAFC team, the soccer team. Like his his sports portfolio is is impressive, and we know he knows how to win. And so I think that's going to have an effect on the Washington Commanders, their whole organization, just by one person's name, and that being Magic Johnson. So um, I, I do see uh, a shift. Um, Eric Bieniemy is now the head coach there. So I know they probably need a quarterback as well. So I'm going to be curious to see where they go in the draft and you know whether they pick a quarterback or not. But I, I'm really looking forward to seeing where this program is going. I think um, you know when it comes to winning, it starts from top down, Jake. We always talk about that. It goes from top down to with new leadership, uh, including Magic Johnson, which I which I think we're all really excited about. A new head coach. I do think that this team is heading in a great direction, and I think they're going to win. They're going to win um, in the next five years. We talk about Super Bowl. I don't know if they're going to go back to Super Bowl, Jake. That's that's going to be pretty tough as long as Patrick Mahomes is playing football. But I do think they'll go to the playoffs and do pretty well. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't vibe with the idea that they'll be in the Super Bowl in the next five years, but I do Agreed. vibe with the idea, like you're saying, they'll turn it around. Um, now, I'm going to I'm gonna throw a curveball at you, and this is why you put this in my head. Uh, I'm going to throw a curveball here. We have heard, we even talked a little bit about, like, is the NFL somewhat colluding against Lamar? We talked about this on the, the Believe in Ram show. Here's the interesting thing. With new ownership, okay, do... The, does the new ownership group push for Lamar Jackson? Like we we've heard some things like, okay, you know, maybe they're not going to go that route. Yeah. They're not interested. That's what we're hearing. But what if they actually do? What if they're the, the team here, you know, where, okay, now there's a new ownership group. Um, you know, you had the whole Pelicans thing, right. You know, when, you know, I, I mean like, that's the thing is like, I think or not Pelicans, but, um, no, yeah, Pelicans. So when you have new owners, right, it's like not everything is going to remain the same. Um, there are owners that just want to own a team and don't want to do much to it and want to just, you know, let the football guys do the football things. But these are the same football guys that were here under the previous regime. Aside from Eric Bieniemy, who's now the OC, you know, you still have Ron Rivera, you know. So... It's interesting, and it does beg the question, you know, will we see a kind of a a change of the guard, a a shift, if you will, looking at Washington? Do they go after Lamar Jackson? Because I honestly think they could. I think this could change, you know, just just a little bit. I think this could change what they're doing a little bit. 
Yeah, that might be another hot take, Jake. There, right? We might have to cut this clip and uh, <laughs> send it and put it on the social media on the social content. But I-, I talked about the leadership part, and we do know when it comes to the sport of football, when it comes to representation, there is a lack thereof. So we talk about having black black and minority owners in the ownership space. So with Magic Johnson, he has now changed that dynamic. When it comes to having black and, dif- and diverse head coaches, Eric Bieniemy is now adding to that that conversation, changing things up a little bit. We talk about Lamar Jackson and the 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 possible concept of, you know, him being pushed out by other owners and, say, and then the owners saying, "Hey, like don't give this guy what he needs." So, I think with this new change in leadership and the ownership as minority men, they might say, hey, we've heard what's going on out there. Let's figure out if we can debunk this myth. Let's figure out if we can invest in Lamar Jackson, give the man what he wants, and really, like you said, changing of the guard, making sure that Lamar Jackson is now in the history books of one of the maybe the highest contracts, uh, quarterback contracts in the NFL. So that'll go against my Joe Burrow prediction there, right? But <laughs> we, talk, we talked about going on a tangent a little bit here. With the new leadership of the Washington football team, with the new head coach there, they might figure out how to get Lamar Jackson to history books by paying him, the, making him the highest paid NFL player that there is, and maybe going to the playoffs and going to the Super Bowl. I mean, we talked about not vibing with it, but as we talk about it, I'm, I'm vibing with it a little bit more, Jake. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I do like the idea of Lamar Jackson going to a Washington, playing under Eric Bieniemy, who has had the experience of coaching of Patrick Mahomes, another MVP of the NFL, and and making a run for it, Jake. I, I don't know. We could be on to something here. This is one of those things where it's our first episode, so it'll be easy to go back and, like, remember, okay, our first episode we talked about this. So if it happens, you heard it here first. <laughs> Not to say that, you know, no one's ever brought that up before, but – it is. It's something to think about. Um, and it was a perfect segue and you, you had me thinking about it. So I was like, all right, we'll do that. Uh, the next thing here uh, for vibe or don't vibe with Quinn and Williams should sit out the Jets OTAs till he gets a new contract. I'm vibing with that, Jake. I'm vibing with that. I, I did see in 2019 when he first got drafted, I, I saw that he sat out the OTAs. I think he had like a calf issue and that could be a little jarring, right? When like your first round draft pick, is getting hurt in OTAs. It's like, ooh, we should probably sit him out, make sure he's healthy, getting ready for training camp and get ready for the season. A lot of times, you know, you, you just from my my time playing, I wasn't drafted, so I had to go to every OTA, every <laughs> training camp, right? I had to play the every game of the preseason. But, you know, the higher rank you are on a football team, so you're Tom Brady's, the Aaron Rodgers, um, some guys don't even show up to OTA. So, you know, for people who are tuning in, who are just joining the sport of football and learning it, it's not, you know, it's not taboo that a guy doesn't join OTA. So I think it's okay that he's not doing that. I think that's important. Um, and, you know, to this point, I mean, we, we talk about Quinn Williams and just his stats. I got his stats pulled up here from, from PPF. And going back to his 2019 season when he sat out for the OTA, right? Um, he only had three sacks his first year. Um, he was So he was 30, 36 in sacks, um, 17 solo tackles, so he was 75th. So going back to the most recent season, he was second in the league with sacks with 13. He um, he was first with forced fumbles with two. And then he had 30 solo tackles and 16 assists. So he's, re- he's ready for his contract to be renewed, to get extended, to, to get bumped up, right? He's seeing Jalen Hurts is getting his money. He's like, all right, I'm not. He's like, I'm not a quarterback, but I'm a baller um, on this defensive line. So I need to figure out what my contract looks like. So I do think it's okay that he's sitting out to protect his body, number one. And then two, to protect his pockets, to make sure that he gets what he deserves because he clearly has balled out last year. So I'm curious to see what you think, Jay. Well, unless anything's changed, he's he has the same uh, agent as Jalen Hurts. I don't know if you forgot about that or you hey, knew that. Yeah. Great so, truck with Cole in. That's, that's why I was like, let's throw that in there with this. But then you, you brought up something that made me think of the Lamar thing. So then I, you know, move that piece. But no, I think uh, it makes a lot of sense for Quinnen. I think here's the thing. Okay, Jets fans aren't going to want to hear it. The Jets absolutely can win a Super Bowl this year. That's not the part you don't want to hear. Um, but the, here's the thing. The part that you don't want to hear is the fact that, yes, while the Jets can win a Super Bowl, it's hard for Quinn and Williams to look at himself individually and just be like, I'm going to put this on the back burner in the benefit of the team. You know, he just watched guys like Alan Lazard get paid. You know, he just watched them go hard after Odell Beckham Jr. They're going hard after Aaron Rodgers. 
that makes you feel good about the direction you're going in as far as being a winning organization. But now it's time for me to get mine because, you know, he's not somebody who already has a really big contract. This is his first contract. You know, he's still on his rookie deal. I get it. And I think he's worth it. I think when you look at guys in the past, like the Jets had Leonard Williams, they decided not to pay him. You know, they've gone in that direction. I'm sure he's a little concerned he might be that, but I think they really value him. I think he's put in a a ton of work. And I mean, look, there could be a weird thing draft night where, you know, they decide, all right, we're going to go with, uh, you know, a day war out of, uh, you know, Northwestern who has like the same measurables as Aaron Donald or even Kalijah Cansey, who we've talked about countless times. There is certainly a scenario where they go with one of those guys that pick 13 or trade down. And if they do that, it would be very interesting because that's not unheard of cam. If you, you know, don't remember the, uh, the San Francisco 49ers didn't want to pay DeForest Buckner. They trade him to the Colts and they ended up picking um, the uh, the South Carolina kid uh, instead at the time. So uh, I totally forgot his name. So it's it's escaping me. He'll, he'll oh, want to fight me on air if you remember that whole thing. That was him. It'll Kinlaw. come back. Kinlaw. There, there go. we go. Javon Kinlaw. So, so, yeah, Javon Kinlaw, very, you know, good prospect coming out. And they were like, you know what? We'll take Kinlaw. We'll trade DeForest Buckner. Like, so they, they trade DeForest Buckner and they took Kinlaw with that pick. We've seen it before. I don't think that is something that should be the favorite in this sense. I don't think that's something that Jets fans should be anticipating, but it's something that's not being talked about that let's put it out there because I think that's a legitimate thing that could happen. I understand this team is very win now right now, but I mean, we also haven't seen everything with the whole Aaron Rodgers scenario. So I don't, I don't know what's going to happen there. Yeah, you never know. And one thing I do know is that their head coach loves defensive guys. So I I have a feeling, I have a hunch that he's going to take care of Quentin. Um, You know, but we'll see. You never know if Aaron Rodgers decides to do whatever he's going to do, then it's going to affect him. But I think, you know, after this, we got a couple of days before the draft. So I between between now and the draft, I think he should hold out and wait. Of course, let some of the draft uh, pieces kind of fall in place. And then hopefully – after that, we'll hear, we'll hear a little bit more from the Jets. But I don't think anything happens until Aaron Rodgers decides what he wants to do. So he's holding up. I think he's holding up the market right now. And Aaron Rodgers might be waiting until after the draft, too, to kind of see what goes down. So it, it's going to be interesting, man. This offseason has been really fun. And I, I think for Q, um, he is a staple for this Jets team. He balled out last year. So he deserves his contract. So I think sitting out for OTAs, I'm vibing with it. It's okay. Uh, it's not taboo, uh, but I like I said, with their, with their head coach, he's a defensive guy, so I think he'll be taken care of. Yeah, and I think um, just wanted to reiterate with the whole you know Aaron Rodgers fiasco, that's definitely Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers has made it known he wants to play for the Jets. Green Bay is holding this thing up. So yeah. it almost makes you wonder at that point, and I don't want to go too much on a tangent here, but it almost makes you wonder – you know, Cam, do the Jets at some point just walk away from this and be like, you know what, we want Aaron, but this is ridiculous. I mean, we, we got to field a roster. We have to know what we're doing on draft night. Like, do you just go, you know what, this is taking too long. We're going to trade up where, you know, instead of getting Aaron Rodgers, having to give up a first rounder next year, we're going to trade up, maybe get a second rounder, uh, give away a second rounder or whatever, um, you know, and go up and get our quarterback. You know, maybe that's CJ Stroud. If he falls, maybe, you know, they try and they go after Bryce young. I don't know. Do you consider that? Like, is that something they're like, you know, a win now team normally wouldn't do this, but now all of a sudden it kind of changes you as a team, because if you go after, you know, either of those guys, now you're not really a win now team, right? You're a team like the Rams who you played on when they got Jerry Goff on his rookie deal. And we saw you can, you know, say all you want. That team's not going to compete for a Super Bowl. Golf was in the Super Bowl two years after being drafted. I mean, that that's that's the thing that we need to keep in mind. And, you know, he was in the playoffs a year after being drafted. So I think it's it's fair to say if this Rodgers thing goes on long enough, the Jets could walk away theoretically, just go up and get their guy in the draft, whether that's Stroud or or Bryce Young or even Anthony Richardson might be a stretch because they would need to get someone because he's not ready to start. But, you know, I think that's a legit thing here. And then all of a sudden, if C.J. Stroud is is good, 
you know, if he if he's better than they've had, that's good enough to make the playoffs and, you know, uh, lead them to like an AFC title game. Now you have a guy on a rookie deal for the next four or five years. That I mean, that's a that's a bargain right there. But also Lamar Jackson, who we're going to probably continue to bring up because he's always you know, he's going to be that household name. Um, at what point do you just, you know, Cam, leave the Aaron Rodgers pool and go chill in the hot tub over with Lamar Jackson and insert draft pick here? Yeah, that I mean, that could be a move as well, right? There's so many ways you can go. I think one thing, you have two generational players who Aaron Rodgers and Lamar Jackson, you have two generational players that you can work with. Aaron is willing to go to the team, right? I haven't seen or heard anything where Lamar's like, yep, send me to the Jets. So <laughs> I think that's half the battle is wanting to do something. And if you have a general generational player wanting to do something, of course, I think you hold on till the wheels fall off and see what that happens. But like you said, you went through those other options. So having a conversation with Lamar and seeing, hey, I know Aaron, you know, the Green Bay Packers are, are uh, holding holding this up a little bit. Would you mind? What, what do you think? And so I think you're, 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 you're spot on there and seeing if Lamar Jackson wants to go to the Jets. But going back to the Aaron Rodgers piece, Lazard is already over there. Uh, the team is ready to win right now. If I'm the Jets, I think you hold on as long as possible. Um, and then, you know, depending on how the draft goes, if not, seeing where Lamar ends up, see, you know, because Lamar, he's already pretty much out the door, right? And so if you have that option, I think you kind of see how the draft plays out and then go for Aaron and Lamar. That, that you got two generational guys on the on the board there. You know, why not? And they're proven already. Come on. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I'm with you there. You know, I, <clears throat> I don't think – one thing I know is I don't think, like, the Packers, if they're – if they're trying to pull one over on Aaron Rodgers and try to get him to stay, uh, he'll retire. Like <laughs> he said he was 90% retired before he went in that weird darkness retreat. Um, yeah. Last thing here on Viber, or don't vibe the Bengals. Okay. We got to talk about the Bengals. They were just in the AFC title game. They were just in the Super Bowl the year before that. They're really riding high. And Zach Taylor has proven himself to be one of the best young coaches in the sport. Joe Burrow's proven himself to be one of the best young quarterbacks in the sport. And I mean, you know, the list goes on, right? Chase and Higgins and, you know, Logan Wilson, the, you know, inside linebacker, they've all, all sorts of talent, but they also have a really talented running back. Who's had some off the field concerns. Um, and this goes back to even, you know, during the draft process. Um, and I'm talking about Joe Mixon, who we have actually talked about before. Um, the question is, when you have a, a running back like Bijan Robinson, who, I mean, I don't look at him as generational. And what I mean by that, before anybody jumps on me, I don't look at him as the best running back in the last 10 years. He's not on that level. But I do look at him like he's like Ezekiel Elliott coming out of uh, Ohio State. And that's a day one starter and potentially a top five running back sooner than later. So my question for you, Cam, do you vibe with the Bengals getting B. John Robinson in the first round if he's there and moving on from Joe Mixon amid his offseason troubles? I vibe. I vibe. It's unfortunate that some of the players have to go through what they go through, right? Like we don't ever wish on a player's downfall, um, you know, as a current as a player myself. Like I would never be like, oh, you know, hope this guy doesn't do well. But for Mixon, it seems like he's following a pattern here, Jake. You know, there's a pattern when it comes to conduct and just character. Um, I think it, it's a character play with with Mr. Mixon. And so what in 2014, I know he was he got in trouble for knocking a young lady out in a restaurant. That's bad character, Jake. I, I think just from day one, what do your parents say? Don't put your hands on other people, right? And not of course, they say don't. A man should have put their hands on a lady. That's that's number one for yeah. as a guy. But there, don't put your hands on other people. And he's done that, and he's had to. You know, he's worked through that. He's done his time and uh, community service and stuff like that. And then going to January of this year, he gets in trouble again with with the with the gun issue. I think he had a gun in the lady's face and says, "Hey, you should be popped in the face. I should shoot you. The police can't get me." Like seeing that on the NFL website, like the NFL posted that I just got that quote from the NFL. So for him to say that, that means he feels like he's above the law and that's not going to fly here, Jake, right? At, the, at some point, 
um, as men, as people, we have to be able to stand for what's right. And it seems like what this guy is doing, you know, his his uh, his behavior towards women, it, it's it's not working out. It's not doing it's not going so well. And so I think we have to stand on the table and be able to say, hey, you know, that's not right. Um, and we can't support that. So that's my that's that's those are my thoughts on the character piece, Jake. And then going to number two with the Bijan part. Seeing Bijan play, I cut on the tape and watched him, watched him run that football. And it reminded me a little bit of, I know you mentioned Ezekiel Elliott, but his elusiveness, his explosiveness, um, his the way he changed direction. I was like, is that Reggie? You know, like I, I'm watching like Reggie Bush's tape and seeing him, you know, just mix people up and change direction, reverse field and, and get open and be able to take up space. I, I'm like, man, this guy, this guy is elusive. And so seeing guys like Bijan coming from a Texas playing, you know, big boy football and stepping into the NFL, I think he can get it done, like you said, without a doubt, um, and start. So I would love to see that. I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say vibe. I will put a pin in this. I want to see Bijan going to the Bengals, supporting Joe Burrow and going to the, going to the Super Bowl if they don't beat, uh, you know, if they beat Patrick Mahomes. So. Yeah, I mean that's are, are we just we're we're penciling that in? That's the AFC title game. I mean, hey, and yeah. I don't I don't hate it. Um, you know, I definitely think the Jets, Bills, even the Dolphins could be in that conversation. But yeah, uh, look, I I'm with you, Cam. I'm I'm vibing with Bijan Robinson, uh, and uh, hopefully my league mates in my dynasty league don't see this because I'm going to try to trade Joe Mixon the second I get off this show. Uh, <laughs> I, I've talked myself completely out of the mix and train. Um, look, I hope he, he figures it out. I really do. And I thought he did, but when you get, I mean, he got charged with aggravated menacing. I mean, I didn't even know what that was. It just sounds awful. You know what I mean? Like it, you don't want to be charged with that. So, no. um, look, they, and to add some context behind it, you know, obviously innocent, until proven guilty that stands but when you have the the police kind of brush this off and i don't want to say brush it off but it first happens and then they kind of dismiss it like he's not you know a suspect and then it comes back and they you know more evidence goes into it so something happened we don't know what happened but something happened that is alarming to me you also play a position where let's be honest at age 30 you're gonna hit a wall I mean, that's just statistically that's been proven in this league. There are outliers that can go beyond 30. Um, but we're even starting to see the guy I just mentioned, Ezekiel Elliott, he's starting to have a hard time. You know, he's not running with the same explosiveness. So uh, B. Sean Robinson, I I'm not really a big fan of drafting a running back number one overall or run in the first round, because especially in this draft, because you have so many, you know, really talented guys. But I vibe with the idea of the Bengals doing it because I don't think they have many needs. And if you feel like that's a guy where, you know, Mixon's good, but like he's giving you like 40 yards uh, rushing on 10 carries or whatever. But then you feel like you could add a guy like Bijan who has that experience in the, you know, the receiving game as well. Keep in mind, they lost Samaj P. Ryan in the offseason. He went to the Broncos. He was a big, Brutal. he was a big piece last year yeah. uh so i actually I, i'm gonna i'm gonna agree with you i'm gonna say uh, i vibe with that as well i think they yeah. should take Bijan if he's there now he might not be there <laughs> but uh you know i think it's gonna be either them dallas or buffalo that that's mm. my prediction in the first round i think he goes in the first round um i think it's gonna be the Bengals, uh cowboys or the bills bills are obsessed with running backs i, I don't know why they have so many that are already like talented but i could see them drafting Bijan. um so so let's talk a little bit about you know the the draft and and, and kind of your thoughts cam is there anything that's kind of on your mind right now, you know, going in this NFL draft is, do you have any takes or anything that you kind of want to put on the record? Like, Hey, I said this, we can go back and we can reference this. Is there anything like that? For the draft coming up, nothing, nothing alarming at this point. Like, Oh, like, you know, this is going to happen. And I told you, so nothing like that. I'm just excited to see how things are going to go with Aaron Rodgers. I think it's going to go with Lamar Jackson. I think, that's a that's playing a big a big part in this whole draft process and i do think between that like i said this week and next week are going to be wild and i think if, if anything happens it's going to happen between these two weeks so you know we'll see we'll see where the chips fall and 
you know, one thing I do know, we're going to be back tomorrow, you know, discussing the discussing the draft and the next day and the next day. So, um, you know, what I will say is best of luck to all the guys out there that are in this process, especially the undrafted guys. Right. Have some patience. Have some patience. Um, make sure you do your homework. You know, have have that information laid out in front of you. That's what I did. I had my Excel sheet with the linebackers on the Excel sheet. Right. Understanding, you know, what team had linebackers and how many. Um, Because I did know, you know, once the draft was done, my phone was going to be blowing up and I would have to figure out where I wanted to go next. So the beauty about that, you can pick where you go. And so for the undrafted guys, make sure you line that up and and find out where availability is. I think that's really important. But how about you, Jake? What what are some of your hot takes for the draft this year? Well, I mean, you got me with the whole... uh... I, I still say it in my head, you can't make the team in the cold tub. You've said that multiple times doing the show with me. So uh, that that's a good thing to throw out there. No, I think with hot takes, um, I'm not expecting any inside linebackers to go in the first round. I, I think it's a, and I know you're, you're a linebacker. So, uh, you know, there, there's not anybody like a Patrick queen. There's not, you know, a Devin white um, who we'll probably talk about tomorrow when we get into those trades uh, cause we definitely have a lot of trade potential trades to discuss. I think we'll have some draft day fireworks cam uh, in regards to trades. We saw him last year. AJ Brown, um, was a huge trade. You could argue it, it yeah. helped Jalen hurts out. It helped the Eagles offense out, led them to the super bowl. Not just him, but he had a lot to do with it. And then, uh, you know, Hollywood Brown went to the Cardinals. That didn't really do anything, but hey, he went to the Cardinals. So they, they uh, have a lot to work on. They have, the Cardinals have a lot to work on. <laughs> so. We we will probably have to have an entire episode dedicated to the demise of the Cardinals because right now I don't know what they're doing. I mean, yeah, I don't know what you can do. I mean, it, you your franchise quarterback, you're sitting there with your, the third overall pick, and you could take. I mean, if what Schefter's talking about ends up being true. Theoretically, you could take a quarterback at three, but you can't because you have all that money come in to Kyler Murray and he doesn't even play until halfway through the season because of the injury. So it's just you don't you really don't want to be Arizona right now. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, for their sake, they'll figure it out. But I'm not feeling great about them in the next few years. I mean, I think this is going to take a while and they better yeah. be patient with their coach. Yeah, I mean, you know, we cover we cover the Rams podcast of Believe in Rams. And, you know, the Cardinals are in that division. And so we, we covered the NFLPA record, report card when the players rank <laughs> the organizations. And, you know, for people who don't know, uh, players have to pay for their own meals uh, at the Cardinals facility. So Hopefully that's every, done. <laughs> look, exactly. Like after this draft, like, hey, guys, let's just we got a new coach in here. Let's make sure that that we have the guy that we, we pay for the food. Food is on us. Right. And so just kind of seeing small things like that as a player myself, I would be hot if I knew some of my check and the money was going out because of the food I ate there. Like, come on fam. So Uh, the Cardinals are praying for you. I know this is the off the edge podcast. We're covering everything NFL. So like you said, we might have to have a whole podcast or a a whole, a whole uh, session for the Cardinals itself. So (laughs) whole segment, at least, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm hoping Gannon can figure out. He got a lot of flack uh, when they, they hired him. Um, but uh, Hey, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, just want to give a shout out. Happy birthday to hall of famer, uh, the legendary left tackle, Tony Baselli. This is our, uh, the, our ending segment where you're going to feature an NFL player every single, uh, episode and, uh, could be current, could be past, you know, whatever. Um, but there's a little bit about Baselli in case you don't know who he is and you've been living under a rock. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, 2022. He was, uh, you know, enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, three-time first-team All-Pro, five-time Pro Bowler. Uh, he was part of the All-1990s team for the All-Hall of Fame team. Uh, he played with the Jacksonville Jaguars for seven years. All of his years were in Jacksonville that he played, but he was drafted number one overall by the Houston Texans in their expansion draft, although he never played a game due to a shoulder injury that never healed. Uh, he started 90 games over seven years and only gave up 15 and a half sacks in that time. Cam, the guy was That's balling. Not, that guy was balling. I know he went to USC and um, I was watching a clip, a feature of him on YouTube and his family was talking about him playing at USC and they would say he would get it, get his hands on one guy and just drive him 10 to 15 to 20 yards back. So it, it's cool to see uh, his success there. And uh, yeah, happy birthday to Mr. Bocelli, Mr. Tony. 
Yeah. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate with the injuries because, you know, and I think that's really where all the dialogue came from to kind of wrap up this show. Uh, when looking at all the hall of fame, you know, back and forth, does he belong? Doesn't he? I think we've seen guys in more than just football that belong in the hall of fame. Um, you know, that just, they don't have the longevity due to injury. And I mean, I would, you know, baseball, I would throw Don Mattingly in there. If you know who he is, I uh, like dominated the sport. Uh, back when he was and then he gets a back injury and then he's not the same but Selly, I mean so dominant and he just he didn't play that many years so for a while he was held out of the pro football hall of fame but um glad he got in he deserves it so yeah that's our uh, feature nfl player for today uh hope you guys enjoyed the show if you did be sure to like subscribe comment rate and review wherever you see this show or get this show and uh we'll be back tomorrow Thanks again to betonline.ag. Later, folks. All right.